In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a super simple motion graphics animation and some really fun creative liberties you can have with the final result. I'm using Blender 4.0.2. Shift A, go to Mesh and add a plane. Now, press the period on your numpad to center and zoom in on your plane, and then press numpad 7 to get a flat above view. Now press Control alt 0 to set your actual camera to that above view. Select your plane and just scale it up a little bit bigger than your camera dimension. This plane is going to be an emitter and it's going to shoot a bunch of shapes upwards towards the camera. So first let's make that shape. Shift A, mesh, go to circle, and in your options down here, give it three vertices. GY to move it up here so it's out of the view. Tab into edit mode and press F. By default, all edges should be selected and when you press F, it fills them with one flat face. Tab out of edit mode, go to your modifiers tab, go to generate and wireframe. If I zoom in on this and press numpad seven, we can increase the thickness right here, make sure boundary is checked and replace original. Now let's give it a material in the materials tab, new. Instead of a surface being the BSDF principled shader, let's just type in the letter E and it automatically goes to emissions. Give it a nice bold color. I like to start with blue and a strength of two. Now back to our camera mode, select your plane, go to your emitters tab, click plus, scroll down a little bit and let's set the object in the render tab to be an object and then select your circle. All right, now it's gonna be shooting triangles. If we press play, they all fall down. Well, we, that's because gravity. So scroll down and go to field weights and turn gravity down to zero. Now let's scroll all the way back up and let's give it some new settings. We want the end of this animation to be, I don't know, 3000 frames just so it goes for a really long time. Set the start to negative 300. So that starts before the animation starts. Give your particles, which are these triangles, a longer lifespan. They're only living for 50 frames, 200 frames. So they go far above the camera view. Let's scroll down to the object uh, settings in this render tab and hold shift and drag up the scale so they can be a little bit larger. If we press zero to go to your camera view, this is what we got so far. Kind of boring because there's no variety in the angle of the triangles. So let's turn on rotation, change this to global X. Depending on the orientation of your original triangle or circle you made, you made it to change this to X or Y. Let's turn up randomized phase to 2.0. So now we have a random uh, orientation or rotation for each triangle being emitted. Check dynamic. And lastly, in your angular velocity little pop down there, change this to global Z and tune yours up to maybe somewhere around 0.7. Now, as they come out, they have an, a velocity around the Z axis. You can change this to Y so they spin in a different way or X, or you can just use random, I guess. Awesome. Now let's increase the amount of triangles coming out by going to the very top and turn up your numbers to two or 3,000 depending on how many triangles you want coming out. Whoa, there's usually a big burst at first, but now they're coming out more frequently than before. Awesome. To give some more variety to how they come out, we can turn up our object velocity and increase randomize. So this will give it different directions and velocities. Great, lots of variety so that nothing looks the same and it's always interesting and unpredictable. Oh, also in your render settings, if you scroll down a little bit, turn off show emitter because in the render, we don't want to see the plane. We only want to see the circles. So if I go back to our camera view, um, I'm going to select my camera and make it a little bit more of a wide angle. So from 35 millimeters down to 16 millimeters. And yeah, that looks great. If we pause it for me, that shift space bar, but that's in your preferences, how you control play and pause. I'm going to press F12 to render. And there we go. We have flying triangles. There is some motion blur, which is great because I have motion blur turned on in my render settings right there. You can also increase this to make it more dramatic. If I go from 0.5 to one, this is what happens. We get more dramatic motion blur and that triangle is totally gone. I don't know why. <laughs> now in your final animation, it's gonna look like triangles are just popping into existence and flying at the camera, which is kind of abrupt and distracting. So to make them fade out of a black void of nothingness into your camera view, we're gonna make a cube, shift A, mesh, cube, size it up to, you know, about as big as your emitter is. And you can scale this down depending on how thick you want this to be, but we're going to make a material that's going to be a volume material. Now we're going to click on our principal BSDF and go to disconnect because we don't want a surface material. We want a volume, um, I don't, not a material, but a volume. So click on there and do volume absorption. Now what this does is it's going to absorb light. So right now we can see inside there, but as we increase our density, look what happens. The void is taking over. Ah, that's good. Um, let's put it up to about 30. And now any light coming through there is not going to make it through unless it is, unless it's closer to the edges. So as we play the animation, you can see they're coming out of this darkness into the light. That's great. So from our camera view, 
that looks so cool. Look at them. They're just kind of fading in. You can control that fade based on how tall your cube is. So if you make it really tall and move it up, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, only the ones close to the camera are making it. <laughs> um, so we don't want it that dramatic. Let's, let's shrink it down to about half. Uh, maybe a little bit shorter. Awesome. I like that. Another cool thing to play with is your depth of field. So select your camera, go to your camera settings, turn on depth of field, go to viewport display and check limits. So now if we go to side view, we should be able to see where the camera is focused, which you can control right here with your distance. There's a little yellow handle. Where is it? Oh, there it is. It was really far down there. It was like way down below us. So again, side view. This is our distance where we're focused. So if we focus right here, all this stuff's gonna be super blurry. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's not super blurry. That's because we need to play with our f-stop, which is the aperture. It's a photography thing. If you don't understand it, don't worry about it. All you need to know is the smaller number you have for an f-stop, the shallower or smaller your depth of field is, which is your in-focus area. So if we go to dot one, a tiny sliver, a tiny sliver, 0.64 meters away from our camera object is gonna be in focus which will eventually be some of the triangles. If we go frame by frame using our arrows, look, this bit of the triangle and this one are in focus. <laughs> That's pretty cool. If you want like a macroscopic, you know, blood cells going through the veins, this is how you do it. But I don't want it that dramatic. Let's go up to dot five there. That's cool. We still got some bokeh, which is that blur, but we also have some triangles in focus. That's beautiful, nice and glowy. Speaking of glow, let's add some more glow. Split our editor into two, go to the compositor, Turn on use nodes, and in the middle of these two nodes, shift A, search, type in glare. Change the type to fog glow, and put your threshold down, down pretty low, like dot one or dot two, and let's render that and see what it looks like. Awesome, very nice glow. You can make the glow more intense by lowering the threshold. You can also make it a little bit smaller, which will make it also a little bit stronger. Very cool. So by combining depth of field, that hazy background volume absorption, motion blur and glow, you can get some really great effects for backgrounds, motion graphics, and other cool stuff to use in your scenes. Now, once you're ready to render your scene as an animation, like a video file, you've got two different options. First, you can render your entire animation as an image sequence, which protects your rendered frames from being uh, corrupted and deleted if Blender crashes. With this project, I'm not worried about that because it's relatively simple, but for long overnight renders for important stuff I'm getting paid for, I will render out an image sequence so that every frame gets an image. And if Blender crashes, I still have all the previous frames still there. But for this one, I'm gonna render straight to a video file. To do that, go to your output settings, make sure your video resolution is correct, set your frame rate. I do everything in 30 frames a second. Set your starting and end frames for the animation output and go down to the output tab and let's tell it where to save our video file. Give it a file name. Set your file format to FFmpeg video. This is gonna make an MPEG video file. If you are doing the image sequence, you just go to PNG, which is cool because it can also have transparency or a JPEG, but PNG is higher quality. And like I said, it can have an alpha channel if you have that set up right. But we're gonna keep it simple for this one. Do an MPEG video file, go down to your encoding and change it from a Troska to MP4 right there. You can also do a .mov file with QuickTime, but I'm going to stick to MP4. And my video codec will of course be H.264. Now just go up to file and render animation. And here it is rendering each frame one at a time until it gets to the 500th frame and then it will be finished. And at that point you'll have an actual washable, uploadable and useful MP4 file. So that's it guys, use your creativity, go crazy with this thing. There's tons of possibilities and cool stuff you can do with this simple technique. Thanks for watching, have a great week.